Hi, I'm Adrian Thomas, the RSPB's Wildlife Gardener, and today I'm going to show you around my garden and all the things I do to help wildlife here. These are things you can do whatever the size of garden that you've got, and it's great for all the family. So, let's crack on. An absolute bedrock of the wildlife-friendly garden are plants. The more plants you grow, the more wildlife that you're going to get, and that could be trees, shrubs, climbers, flowers, vegetables. A really affordable way of growing a riot of colour that's great for bees and other pollinators is to sow a pack of annual wildflowers. Uh, I've got three packs here. One of them is good for bees and birds, one of them is the absolute pinnacle for bees, and one of them is also great for butterflies, which can be really picky about which flowers they go to. So use some of these, and for a really speedy response, you can get wonderful value for wildlife throughout the spring, summer and autumn. If you were to sum up the three things that wildlife needs in a garden, it's food, water and shelter. And some of those plants that you grow provide a lot of that shelter. But sometimes we need to give wildlife a helping hand. And that's where things such as this hedgehog house come into play. This is one of the, the RSPB's hedgehog houses which have all the things that hedgehogs need. So it's made from sustainable timber, it has a concealed entrance that keeps the hedgehog safe, it has ventilation in it and it even comes as a kit so you can make it as a family and really get the full value out of it. And so the main thing left to do is to find somewhere safe and shady for it to go. So you've helped the hedgehogs by giving them some shelter, but they also need those other two elements. They need something to drink, and something to eat. When it comes to drinking, a bowl of water, that will be perfectly adequate. But with food, you really do need to give them the things that hedgehogs need. Something like this, Bramble's Crunchy Hedgehog Food has the right mix of nutrients and minerals, but it's also crunchy, which is brilliant for hedgehogs' dentition. Somewhere to feed hedgehogs? Well, something like this hedgehog snack dish is perfect. It has a drainage hole in the bottom to ensure that that crunchiness isn't lost and the food doesn't go soggy. In terms of where to feed, well, the most simple advice is wherever your hedgehogs tend to go in the garden, which could be the patio. If you do have foxes and cats visit the garden, then what you can do is you can create a, a little feeding station for the hedgehogs that only they can access. If there's one group of creatures you can help in the garden in terms of providing shelter, then it's solitary bees. Now we've got one species of honeybee in the UK, we've got about 25 species of bumblebee, but 225 species of solitary bee, and many of those need holes to nest in. And that's where using a bee hotel can be so useful. But I've got a couple of little tips and tricks for you because a bee hotel really needs to be facing south in a sunny position for the bees to use it. And they also love the bee hotel to be securely fixed, which is where having uh, a secure fixing point such as this on the RSPB Bee Hotel is so useful. What you can also do with this one, which is made of sustainable timber, is you can take out the nesting columns uh, when you need to clean them out and then put them back in to be used again. Another group of creatures that you can help in the garden, and they really do need your help, are bats. And that's where having a bat box is essential. This is the RSPB's Burford Bat Box, which has all of the features that bats love. So it's made of untreated timber, which is really important. It's made from timber from a sustainable source. And all the joints are really tight on this, because if there's one thing that bats hate, it's drafts. It has two nesting chambers, and you can see the little entrance ladders that the bats land on before they scurry up inside the box and hang upside during the course of the day. Where to put them? Well. You can put them in all sorts of aspects. They do need to be relatively high up, but you could put them north, east, south or west. And indeed, having them in different positions really does help bats because they choose different positions for different times of year. And I've got two of these up on my house and they have bats in them, so this really does work. A really easy way to help give creatures shelter in the garden and indeed give them a nesting site is to put up a bird nesting box. 
These are two from the RSPB's Apex nest box range. This one here with a hole in it is for smaller birds such as blue tits, great tits and house sparrows. This one has a 32 millimeter hole, whereas this open fronted box is much more for robins, wrens, and if you're lucky, pied wagtails, and if you're really lucky, spotted flycatchers. Both these nest boxes are made from sustainable timber. They have drainage holes in the bottom of them. You're able to take the side panel off when you clear the box out uh, in the autumn, and they have those fixing points that means that you can secure them. In terms of where to put the nest boxes, then with a sparrow tit box, then you're looking at somewhere probably up on a house wall or even on a tree trunk, um, facing between north and east. That's really important so the birds aren't facing into the sun or the inclement weather. With robins, they really do love the box to be tucked away behind tangles of vegetation, such as a, a climber, maybe some ivy, so that if you can't see the box, that's probably the ideal position. I love them so much that I've got four of them myself. This year, two of those were occupied. So having multiple boxes, don't just stick at one, go for several because different species will use them. And in the case of house sparrows, you could have your own little colony. If there's one thing that I'd encourage everybody to do in the garden for wildlife, it's add water in some form. And if that water can be as a pond, all the better. Suddenly you've got a home for dragonflies, damselflies, frogs, newts, toads, the whole works. Now I realize that I've got a really large pond in the garden and it's magnificent and I love it to bits, but it's made in exactly the same way as this RSPB pond liner kit. And there are three different sizes of kits so you can choose the one that's right for your garden. But it's really simple, you get a waterproof liner, and you get a recycled fleece that goes underneath the liner and ensures that any rocks that work their way up through the soil don't puncture the liner. It also comes with an expert guide to help you do it in the right way. And it's so much simpler than people think. A pond of this size, well, it could be done in an afternoon. Lay the underlay, lay the liner, put in the water, and maybe add some pond plants, and that pond will be bursting with life in its first year. Surely the easiest way to provide water in the garden is to add a bird bar. And it is, as the name suggests, a place where birds can bathe and keep their feathers in tip-top condition. But of course, it's a place where they can also have a drink, which they'll often need both in icy weather and in warm weather. This is the RSPB's bird bath, which is made of lightweight resin. So this is much lighter than it looks, really easy to put together, and it comes with ground pegs to ensure that it remains stable. And it has all the features that birds love in a bird bath. My motto for a bird bath is it should be ideally like a puddle on a stick. And this is what you've got here, a shallow puddle so that birds haven't got deep water that they would be nervous about. They can perch on the edge, have a drink, or if they want to, they can all pile in together and have a communal bathe. It's really important to keep bird baths hygienic. And we've got a video all about that to show you the best way how. But pop this in your garden, preferably in prime view from your window, and it'll give you loads of attention, as well as giving your garden birds all of the water that they need. An important part of gardening for wildlife is ensuring that there is food throughout your garden, whether that be seeds, berries, worms and insects. But wildlife also sometimes needs supplementary food, something to complement their natural diet. And that's where, in particular, feeding birds is so important. I've got here the ultimate easy clean uh, seed feeder from the RSPB in which I've got sunflower hearts. These are great food for my tits, for the finches, a great spotted woodpeckers love that. But providing a variety of diet, well, we need it and so do birds. And this is a uh, a buggy nibble mix in here, but you could have peanuts within this. This is the ultimate easy clean nut and nibble feeder. Again, my great spotted woodpeckers absolutely love that. Uh, feeding them requires putting them in a, in a good elevated position where the birds are safe when they're feeding, but you can feed some birds on the ground. And here I've got the RSPB ground feeding table with dried mealworms on it which are adored by my robins and my blackbirds. 
I think one of the really important things when feeding on the ground in an open way like this is to only put out as much food as is taken during the course of a day and then you put out fresh on the following day. And by feeding such a variety of foodstuffs and all of the things that you do around the garden to provide natural food to, well, all of that provides such a rich and varied diet for all of your wildlife. Doing things to help wildlife in your garden is so rewarding. I love it. And not only that, but your garden wildlife will genuinely benefit. We know it can be great for nature conservation. We hope you found this video inspiring and there's lots more material across the RSPB website to help you on your journey. So come on, let's all bring our gardens to life.